in New Hampshire. We're joined by Malik Abdul, a GOP strategist and former staffer uh, in the George W. Bush administration. Uh, Malik, thank you uh, so much uh, for being with us. The, the Boston Globe has a new poll showing former President Donald Trump with now a 17-point lead over Nikki Haley. What does she have to do between now and Tuesday to close this gap? Well, I think that she should continue to do what she's been doing thus far, trying to distinguish herself from Donald Trump. That's been part of the challenge for many of the candidates trying to distinguish themselves. You have a Vivek Ramaswamy, who was essentially a carbon copy of Donald Trump. Many people expected that Ron DeSantis was a more palatable version of Donald Trump, but not Donald Trump himself. Nikki Haley has to just really um, hammer in on those moderates, more so who are in more so in New Hampshire than there were many conservatives in Iowa. Iowa. What she has to do also, though, if she does not win, I think that the only way that Nikki Haley survives beyond New Hampshire going into Super Tuesday or even South Carolina, for that matter, is that she has to at least close the gap between um, within single digits of Donald Trump. As you said, I believe she's leading. Donald Trump is leading by 13 or 14 or so points now. But she has to close the gap within single digits to give people any confidence that she can be competitive in her own home state where Donald Donald Trump at this point, I believe, leads her by maybe 20 or 30 points. Yeah, in the same poll, DeSantis only registers 6%, even though he finished second in Iowa. Why isn't he getting any sort of bounce out, out of Iowa? Usually, if you, you finish second in the Hawkeye State, maybe New Hampshire voters will take another look at you. It seems like they're running in the other direction here. Well, first of all, I didn't realize that you were out reporting in the snow, in the cold. My heart is with you. Thank you for this, for sure. But as far as Ron DeSantis is concerned, I think that the problem Ron DeSantis had is that we saw as he rolled from the moment he rolled out his campaign that Ron DeSantis was not really able to um, excite the electorate beyond conservatives. That was the problem that Ron DeSantis had even in Florida. If you look at his governance, even in Florida, Ron DeSantis really hasn't had to work with the other side. And now, because he has a supermajority, he doesn't have to work with Democrats on anything. So I I think part of Ron DeSantis's national message was really tailored to a conservative audience, which matters for sure in a Republican primary, but it's not enough to actually get more people outside of that conservative space looking at you. So Ron DeSantis, he didn't get a bump out of Iowa, even though he beat Nikki Haley, in part, I, I would argue, it's because there is no second step. There is no next step for Ron DeSantis. There is a next chapter for Nikki Haley if she does well in New Hampshire. But as far as Ron DeSantis is concerned, the electoral map really doesn't work in his favor. So I don't know where he would win outside. Even if he won Iowa, I don't know where else Ron DeSantis would win. Uh, Malik, you mentioned uh, the weather. Yes, it is cold here in New Hampshire, but after being in Iowa, I promise you, this feels like Florida. In fact, I'm going to take my uh, my earmuffs off uh, just because uh, I'm actually getting slightly <laughs> toasty after a week <laughs> week in Iowa. Uh, two debates uh, were canceled this weekend, uh, Malik, mostly because Trump would not appear and the other candidates bailed as a result. I mean, if, if you were advising uh, on keeping that tactic up or or face the competition. I guess the reality is, is that Republican primary voters just didn't care that he never debated anybody this, this cycle. And this is not something that we're really accustomed to in an election cycle. Um, typically, it is only, for instance, an incumbent president who typically don't, you know, won't do any type of debating. But then in this case, it was someone who wasn't the incumbent, a former president, choosing not to debate. But I believe that's probably because Donald Trump had the infrastructure, he had the name recognition that he didn't feel as if he needed to. And even once it went down to probably about two or three candidates, we see right now that it was a fight between Nikki Haley Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, none of them laid a finger on Donald Trump. They were really um, aiming their fires at each other, and it really didn't impact Donald Trump at all. But many people were wondering whether or not Donald Trump would get below 50 point, will get below 50 percent in Iowa, and he did better than that. So Donald Trump is defying expectations, and I imagine him, maybe he, maybe he foresaw that a bit and kind of justified why he didn't need to participate. Well, Malik Abdullah, GOP strategist, conservative radio a talk show host, want to thank you so much for your time. We certainly appreciate it. Enjoy the conversation.
Well, coming up on the race week.